as everybody knows right now, the coronavirus is going out like crazy. My thing was, is no utilities, right? The only thing we have to pay for is electric. If you're going to be doing the same thing as everybody else, you're not going to be memorable and everybody's going to forget you. Welcome hey. back to I Buy Real Estate, your free step-by-step guide so you can buy real estate. Today, we got special guests in the building out of Denver, Colorado, Hung. Knowing Hung for over three years, he has done over 200 deals, not only in his market, Denver, but virtually in Houston, Chicago, Kansas City, Georgia, and not just houses, storage facilities as well. He excels at building systems and integrations, one of the best. I see out there. Welcome, Hung. Hey, thanks, man. That was a that was a big intro, man. <laughs> yeah, man, I got you. You deserve it. You earned it. So, so now, Hung, here in New York, clo- real estate closing times postponed. What about what, what's going on in Denver, Colorado, right now? Tell tell us about that. Man, it's the same thing, right? So, Colorado is it's uh they actually just gave us a uh, stay at home order, uh, meaning that uh, if we go outside for too long or at any hours, except for essential things like going to the grocery store, filling up your gas or going to work, uh, pretty much it's, you're going to get fined, right? So you can't really do anything. You're basically uh, on lockdown. Not quite martial law yet, but pretty dang close. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, that's, that's basically what's going on right here in Denver right now. Like all, all the businesses are basically cutting down staff, uh, restaurants are closed, salons, hair salon, like you can't even get a haircut or anything like that. So same here, same here. So what about closings? They're postponed? Like, oh, closings. Oh yeah, no. Uh, closings aren't postponed. Uh, they are actually going through my, yeah, I just had a couple partners actually just, uh, closed on a couple deals here last week. Uh, one yesterday. Closings are still happening. It's not, it's not, uh, closing, but, uh, it's more people are actually starting to pull out of the market a little bit. The traditional route buyers, they're actually pulling out of their contracts. They don't even care about their earnest money buyers right now. Yeah. <laughs> they're just freaking out right now, right? Damn, damn. Okay. So are are, are you still lead genning? Uh, what's going on with that? Oh, man. I'm always lead genning, right? I'm always having to come up with an, uh, the next uh, new creative thing, matching what the market is. As everybody knows right now, the coronavirus is going out like crazy. Just basically a lot of people are losing jobs. However, you know, the government is actually postponing a lot of things. Like you don't have to pay for rent. You can't evict people. Foreclosures are going to be pushed uh, for a year and stuff like that. Right. So honestly, it's, it's more changing up the mindset instead of like, Hey, want to sell your house? It's more, how do we help, help you out in your situation currently? So we're, we're changing all our marketing tactics to that. Speaking of marketing tactics, <laughs> I know you show me a few, like, come on, show, show, show me, show me your newest marketing strategy. All right. So I actually just got these, uh, little flyers actually printed out. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, read so, what it says. So you can see. Affected by COVID-19, AKA, AKA coronavirus. <laughs> we want to help. Yeah. Literally so we want to help. By step by step. God. Exactly. So it says step one, two, three, four. Basically, it just says, give us a call, tell us your situation, we'll give you a free home or evaluation, and then we'll provide a solution. The only time that we actually say something like that we need to sell is something right here, which is need quick cash, right? Other than that, is like whatever the situation, and we even have this little guy that's like holding him and yep, pulling him help. up. <laughs> yep, I see that. I see that. I, I love it. And, and you mark it like this calls today, regain your fresh breath of air that's that's freaking awesome everyone's staying home they need this new fresh of air like this innovative creative marketing right there taking advantage of today's situation let's go right right exactly i mean you got to be memorable right so to be memorable you have to actually have certain things in place right so like if you're going to be doing the same thing as everybody else you're not going to be memorable and everybody's going to forget you right as soon as you hang up the phone or leave their door or something like that they right away they they forget about you right away right so basically before we set an appointment we actually make sure that they put something like on their refrigerator to make sure that we're actually going to be uh <laughs> coming to their house in that way you know the refrigerator is the number one place people go to right they need a drink they need food they need to do anything they go straight to this kitchen and then they just open the refrigerator so if they see that we're on their refrigerator whatever they're prepping for right that's what that's what we kind of want to do and right now foreclosures aren't it right right but it's like say if you need them to give them a mortgage statement or something like that right that's one of the things we ask for how much you owe left on your mortgage 
if you see that on there, it's just like, hey, we need to talk about that. Why don't you just put it on your refrigerator so that way you don't lose it? And two, make sure that we know that we're coming, right? So you don't forget that we're coming. <laughs> cool, cool. That's innovative right there. Okay. <laughs> so talk to me about your business today, offensively and defensively. Yeah. So offensively, what we're doing is we're doing Facebook marketing. We're doing uh, door hangers and stuff like that. I know that it's kind of iffy for us to go outside and knock on doors and stuff. That's not actually allowed right now, but <laughs> being like an entrepreneur, you know, you know how it is. Like we do things that uh, aren't really allowed. <laughs> <laughs> it's marketing tactics. I mean, you can send it the direct mail if you wanted to. It's the same, same tactic, right? You don't have to door knock or anything like that. Cold calling, we're still cold calling. I know that some areas are stopping allowing us to cold call, uh, but people are still doing it, right? Uh, Facebook campaigns is just everybody's staying at home and everybody's looking at Facebook, man. So we gotta we gotta up that stuff, right? <laughs> Uh, basically, you, gotta, you, you have to basically take uh, people's psychology, right? People, how people react to things and then you pivot with it, right? So right now, people are freaking out. People are reading the news, right? And they're on Facebook seeing what everybody else is doing. Facebook also provides news articles and all these things too. I don't know if some, some are fake, some are real, whatever it is. But I think they actually put up a pretty good algorithm. So people are back getting back onto Facebook and, you know, using Facebook right now just to like communicate with other people. Uh, Zoom calls or Facebook messenger calls too, right? So yeah, man, it's just a good opportunity to actually follow what people are freaking out about, right? So uh, instead of having them freak out about the virus, just sound like, hey, you know what, we can actually help you get through the situation. And then from there, we basically, what, what we're doing right now is we're actually building up our network, right? Buyers aren't buying really, uh, sellers, you know, they're kind of freaked out about people walking their properties and stuff like that. So we're just building out relationships right now. We're calling every single realtor out there in the market. We're calling every single wholesaler out there in the market, every single attorney, doctors, blah, 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 blah. Right. From there, we're actually building out what we're calling a giant affiliate network. <laughs> and from there, anybody that needs help, we can send them to each other and so on and so forth. Right. That way we, we know that they're not going to forget about us if something happens in return, they'll send us over some properties and then we can take a look at it from there. So uh, right now that's, that's our defense, our offense, you know, obviously we're, we're still continuing marketing and stuff like that. So beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Like whatever it takes, get it done. <laughs> whatever so, it takes, man. I know um, you have purchased a lot of real estate, but, but over the years you have purchased some storage facilities. Tell me the idea behind that as opposed to rentals. Storage facilities is a certain, a little niche that uh, I kind of love, actually. I, I fell in love with this little niche. And the reason why is because, I mean, being in the industry for a while, you obviously know as well, like when you're actually helping somebody out through foreclosure and stuff like that, they actually, there's, there's one thing that they have all in common, right? And that's the thing is they don't want to get rid of their stuff. Like they just, they just want to hoard their stuff forever. Even if they lose their property, they don't want to sell it. They don't want to sell a jet ski or ATV or anything like that to help save them from getting into a foreclosure. It's, it never makes sense to me. The, the, the thing is, is people do the same thing with storage facilities, right? They, they, they rent a storage unit. They store junk in there. <laughs> they, they store like literally sometimes we open up a, a container and it's just trash. I don't even know what the heck it is. And it's just like, shirts from like i don't know they they, they put, never wore it because they didn't they didn't touch it for like 20 years so so yeah they literally just store trash and they pay us to store their trash so i mean it's it's like the best freaking thing right <laughs> Check this out. say that again they pay us to store their trash <laughs> yeah they, they. <laughs> and then the second thing is is at the time we were doing around eight flips out at a time uh roughly eight uh per month eight, eight flips per month dude it was just nightmare after nightmare right like contractors would forget to shut down the water and they would take out the sink and then they they, they the water shut off valve fall or uh, fails or something like that and it floods the entire thing right and sometimes those would be condos and those condos they don't flood just the one unit right they flood everything below <laughs> so if you're on the third floor second floor you have to mess up the fourth floor you're messing up and then if they have a basement you're messing up the basement too so not only did we mess up the unit below us but we actually messed up the gym that was below us as well so our contractors and we had to pay for the materials and all that stuff to fix everything that was below that 
<laughs> so nightmare, right? Ended up making like only like 200 bucks on that property after everything was said and done. But you know, it was better than losing money. My thing was, is no utilities, right? The only thing we have to pay for is electric. Uh, we don't need to pay for air conditioning unless it's an indoor building. Uh, so no climate control or anything like that. And uh, the last thing is no plumbing. Literally, I don't have to deal with floods unless it's it's like areas like Houston or something where it floods all the time. But without no, having wait. those those actual utilities being a factor, it was just super sexy for me. <laughs> God, God. So, so we, we got like the, the, the benefits of owning storage, but walk me through the numbers. Like what, what's monthly storage? What's cap rate? T tell me more about the numbers. Okay. So the biggest one we actually looked into was, uh, it, it was going to be selling for $2 million and it, this was a 300 unit and the price range is anywhere from $60 to $300 depending on your actual unit the actual income though uh it was around 100 and right it, i don't remember the exact math right now uh but it's it sits at a 10% after expenses and we were actually taking in expenses at uh 35% expense ratio so we we're only capturing 65% just based off the taxes uh, expenses and maintenance fees and then manage management fees. Right. And yeah, after we did all that, uh, yeah, we were still sitting around a 10 or a 12 cap. I can't remember, but they're, they're a little bit higher than multifamily because not many people were going after it. It's, it's not this sexy thing, right? Like, like you don't, don't take your girlfriend like, Hey, look, we own the storage facility. No, you like <laughs> you go out there and you're just like, oh, okay, look, this is the hotel we own. This is the apartment we own. You know? <laughs> Those are the sexy things, right? Yeah, the storage yeah, yeah. unit is like, it's not sexy. <laughs> There's a lot going on with systems and processes, right? I mean, so, some of the people don't even actually realize like the certain small things are actually considered a system, right? Basically what I define a system is what you do repetitively over time inside your company then becomes a system, right? So if you're doing phone calls every single time and you're transferring it over to the next guy, so if you have inside sales, outside sales, or whatever you guys want to call it, acquisitions managers, inside sales, contracts, you know, admins that do it, or uh, transaction coordinators, or whatever you want to call it, right? There's those people, and every single one of them has a process, right, that you actually came up with yourself. However, uh, when I ask you, like, how do you train your new acquisitions guy? Or how do you uh, how do you train uh, your admin to do uh, the transaction coordinator's job or something like that, right? Nobody actually has something like that in place and actually teach that. You just have to look through it and just know exactly what your systems are, and then from there, once you actually mark mark your systems, then you can actually see where you're defi where you're deficient at, where you're slow at, whatever it is, and how you can improve it. For example, if if you're uh, flipping a house. The, the thing that most people actually take up most of their time is actually going to Home Depot. <laughs> so every single time your contractor needs something, you're running out to Home Depot, even a box of nails or something like that. And every single time I tracked it, I even told my contractors, I was like, it doesn't matter what it is. If you're going out to Home Depot, it's going to take an hour. You're, going, you're wasting one hour, period. He's like, no way. I'm going to make 10 minutes. Trust me. He goes in there. He, he was going to buy like a couple two by fours or something like that. Uh, and then we, we tracked it, right? So it was 10 minutes there. 10 minutes back so that's 20 minutes already while he was picking up his uh the two by fours they ran out <laughs> so they had to they had to lift down another pallet from the very top you know you know how it is like they had to lift it from the very top and they, they it, it took them like 30 minutes to get a, a, a guy just to come down and lift that pallet and put it down to the ground uh, all said and done, he came back and I was like, dude, look, it's an hour and a half and you, you finally got back and you, all, all you need to do is two by fours. Like <laughs> what I did was I, I basically automated the entire thing. Uh, we basically chose the finishes and stuff that we want, right? We do all our drawings, obviously, because you need to get the permits anyway. So that way we know how long each wall is. We calculate how many studs we need and all these things. And we add 10% onto the studs just in case they mess up. So like vanities, bathrooms, everything is the same, right? And we walk through, we're like, okay, look, we need 160, 130, 124. Uh, we need three toilets. We need 16 door handles. We're ordering the same thing with the same SKU number every single time. So I put all that stuff into an Excel spreadsheet and then basically put in the prices of the Home Depot uh, website. And uh, basically what we do is we just go through and we're, we're just recording it, right? So it's like, hey, we need one, one bathroom. We need one, one uh, whatever, 130-inch vanity here. We need this many cabinets and so on and so forth, right? And so once we do that, we put it all into this Excel spreadsheet. It auto-calculates with all the SKU numbers that are based off what we need. We just select it. So it's like 130-inch vanity. And if we needed two, we just change the quantity to two. And it'll, it'll still bring up all the SKU numbers and all that stuff that we need. 
bring it to the bottom, we email this out and it already shows us the estimated price with the taxes and all that stuff. So we know exactly how much we need because you know, Home Depot uh, needs $1,500 to actually get into their bidding room, right? So if you get the bidding room, then you get an additional discount. So we know exactly what we need in certain stages that give us bigger discounts. The bidding room the first time is always better than that bidding room afterwards. So I mean, I kept track of that too. Once we email it over to the Home Depot guys, we already know like what the estimate cost is. From there, once they actually send us a text to confirm, we can match up the phone versus that and we can actually see like if it's too low or is it too high? What's What happened? What's the difference, right? And we adjust from there. But most of the times it's pretty accurate. And then uh, we hit one. Right as soon as we hit one, we paid for the entire thing. They pull out all the stuff and they put it into, uh, I don't remember what it's called, like layaway or you know, where the contractors come, just pick it up, right? After an hour or so, the Home Depot guys, they pull it all out, ready for the contractors. We say, hey, contractors, all the stuff is ready. And they all come there at once, right? Or two, if uh, we know that a new house is coming in, uh, we would have them ship it the day of the construction start or day one demo, right? We have it all shipped there exactly the same time. So that way they don't have to do anything but move the stuff inside the house. So that's, uh, all the nails, all the framework, all the stuff, and even the dumpsters all come at the same time, right? Yeah, man, it's, it's basically just automating that process. So that way they don't have to go to Home Depot. Materials, we don't have to go there and shop every freaking time. We don't have to go to the shelves and pick it up or anything like that, right? So, and we, obviously we develop into phases. So like drywall phase or like, you know, pre-phase where like you, you're framing things and then, you know, like the drywall phase where you're getting all the drywalls in there plus the mud. And then the last one was finishes, right? So flooring, vanities, and faucets and stuff like that. So every single time it, we, we try to eliminate people going to Home Depot, minimizing cost and time. So we basically went, took our flips that took three to six months on average to going in and out of a house in three weeks. Like, and we're talking full renovations, right? Are you full renovations, including new plumbing, like new foundation, new electrical, new everything? Very systematized. I think one of the key words you mentioned there is tracking. When you're uh, setting up systems and processes, you gotta track everything. That way, you can put it in guides. You can put it in systems. That way, it's, it's automated. Exactly, man. So, like, the thing is, is most people don't actually write down what their systems are, what they're actually doing, right? So, like, if you if you just keep track of that, you can actually automate your training as well. So, like, if if one of my admins had to quit or something, like transaction coordinator quit, I already mapped that out. So then I can actually retrain somebody else in in weeks rather than months or days instead of weeks. And, and, and talk to me about like tracking KPIs. Like, like what, what's, what's your system on that? Oh, it depends. I have KPIs for everything, right? And there's actually a really good book out there. Uh, it's called The Checklist Manifesto. So I have checklists on everything, right? So like if, let's say uh, I'm going out to an appointment, right? If I'm going out to an appointment, I have a pre-appointment checklist, right? I, I know that, okay, one, I need to get the comps, right? Three low, three high. I need to know if I have the contracts out there, right? <laughs> and these are all pre-filled contracts. So we have the owner's name, the descriptions, uh, all that stuff. So that way, the only thing that we need to do is fill out the number as soon as we agree it to it, right? We need to know the amenities in the area. So that way, we if you're on the phone, you're saying, hey, we really want to buy a house in the area. You don't know anything about the area, like pretty much lying to them, right? <laughs> so you need to know exactly what's going on in the area. We need to know exactly the comps, right? It's just in case the owners bring it up. <clears throat> see certain things like when when they're on the phone right they, there's a checklist that says okay look did you get their why right what's their property address like what renovations do they need and stuff like that right if, if you don't ask those questions then you're not going to get to know exactly what you're looking for to make that offer right checklists for everything is important well, what's what's your advice for just like someone that has done the deal but now they want to systematize it like like what's your guide to them to starting to systematize their business? I mean, if they've only done one deal or so like that, they basically just have to reverse engineer it, right? Uh, go back there and just write down lessons learned. Lessons learned are super important right now, right? So like, what did you actually do in that situation or actually help out that homeowner in order for you to get that contract, right? And then how many, con how many people did you actually compete with in order to get that contract? Like I know every single time I put out an offer, I'm probably competing with a minimum of 10, 
like and there, there could be way more than that right like 30 people walk into the houses so i'm competing with a lot of people <laughs> right <clears throat> so certain things like that uh basically lessons learned like why did you get that contract i know that some of them is because we're, we're faster than somebody else and they just trust us a lot more speed is key to everything right so you say like were you the first one to actually send out that contract were you the third one or fifth one or whatever it is right you probably won't know that but uh at least try to reverse engineer it right take the steps back like okay what made you win that contract did the lady go through foreclosure did was she going through divorce was it that she just needed to buy another house real quick was this a rental property like her, she, did she just need to get rid of it because uh, she needed to pay for her son's tuition or something like that right keywords that you used in order to build rapport right so this this is actually mapping out like your negotiation tactics right so obviously uh most people don't know their negotiation tactics as well but there's like the takeaway methods the option methods like if you give them an option like hey i have an appointment are you available on tuesday or thursday from four to five or something like that right giving them an option Option. that's an option close uh the takeaway you go up to the door like obviously you're going up there and you're just like i freaking suck at sales like i mean i'm like the freaking worst i don't even know why my partner sent me out here but if i don't have an offer to get bring it back to the office they're, they're just gonna get so mad at me right so like how can like are you sure we can't just come up with a number today <laughs> and then do a price drop later or something like that right that just you see like, I, I just track every single thing like every single time I say something or do something, I track it <laughs> and I build a system around it. Detail. So yeah, it's, the, it's every, everything's inside the details, right? So like same thing, like, you know, if somebody opts into your Facebook campaign, you have five minutes and to call them. If you don't call them within five minutes, that lead is dead. Like you, you'll never be able to contact them ever again. Um, so obviously you want certain things. There are systems out there where one, as soon as they opt in, the phone call actually comes directly to your phone right away. You don't have to do anything. You can also set that up so a VA can call out right away, right? Uh, answering services. If you, if you want to maximize or be instant, uh, basically most people text all the time and most people are afraid of getting on the phone. So chat bots are incredible, right? So certain things like that, you, I mean, the more you do, the more you know how to pivot and what you're actually lacking. So therefore you can then research the systems and processes that you need in order to uh, pivot from there. Wow. Good, great, great, great advice. Great value. So I feel generous today. Why don't we give back to the viewers just like a few actual guides and systems where you have in place that just, that just share, share with all the viewers out there that's struggling right now. Just, I'll, I'll put it in the description below. Hung's going to share a few systems and guides that he already has in place that's working for him. That way you guys already have a game plan of uh, go on the next guy, go on the next system. So you want to do that, Hung? Uh, maybe. <laughs> just kidding. I'll, I'll give you something. I'll give them something. Hang on. Uh, sounds good. Sounds good. So, so great value, especially for the systems and integration. I know a lot of people, even especially myself, because I'm like more of a visionary, visionary. I struggle with that. So day by day, I'm still working on that. I'm still improving. Um, before we end it, Hung, do you got any advice or words of encouragement uh, for all the viewers out there, especially in uncertain times like these? uncertain times it's it's always super hard uh to actually predict where everything is going or anything like that but basically um uh, it's more being persistent and being consistent on everything so uh morning routines don't let that give it up even though like you know i work out every single day at 6 30 in the morning uh i can't go out to the gyms because they're all closed so i work out at home you know bought some certain things like rollers and things that you can work out with like and downloaded some apps like the free Freeletics <laughs> basically gives you some free exercises that you can do at home. Like, see, this this is kind of like basically just gives you in-home videos and stuff like that that you can actually work on. So don't give up on your stuff, right? Just be consistent and be whatever it is, right? So like right now, if it's uncertain and you don't have, you know that you don't have the buyers, start building out buyers, right? Call out other people. I'm guaranteeing there's still people out there that are going to buy as long as it's a good deal right? You know, deals are going to start coming up and a lot of people are start, going to start looking at liquidating their houses to capture some equity, right? On the way down right now, just, and then uh, obviously you want to adjust your numbers to what it is, right? So uh, consistently calling lenders, consistently calling realtors, lis listen to what the market trends are like and stuff like that. And, and you, you shouldn't go wrong. Right. Absolutely. And, and I think uh, you mentioned a good point. Everyone staying at home right now, there is no better time to call and build relationship than right now. 
So yes, you might not have buyers list. Start calling buyers right now. Start calling up sellers right now. Put stuff in the pipeline so when things are actually freed up, then they can actually start closing. Then you're actually five steps ahead of other people. Yep, exactly. And then if you if you can't uh, find buyers for yourself, leverage others, right? Like build out friends, like call other wholesalers, call other realtors, because they have they have connections with investors, they have connections with buyers and stuff like that, right? So like, don't think that you're in this alone. Like you have to build out a team. And if you're not going to be building out a team, you're not going to make it, right? It's, it's, it's extremely important that you know that even if you're working for yourself in your own company, you're not working by, for yourself and your own company. You have to be part of a team. Yeah. And, and just because the government is restricting you, like things such as gym, don't let that restrict you from working out. You just got to put in you got to think outside the box and act outside the box in times like these. So where, where, where you just brought up like the workout apps, workout at home. There's nothing wrong with that. Exactly. Let me, let me show you something like basically my, my 30 day training program, right? As soon as I hire an acquisitions guy. Okay. Um, let me see if I can share the screen. Can you see my screen? Yep. Yep. Beautiful. Cool. So this is a, this is what I call my intranet, right? So I have a I use, I use Google Sites for this, but first thirty days basically, uh, I break it down between Maslow's hierarchy. Obviously, if you don't know this, uh, basically it's you you want to do something, but you don't know how to do it, or you don't know what you're doing, but you just know that you want to do it. So therefore, you take action and you start doing it, right? As soon as you start taking action, start doing it, then you become competent in it, or I mean, you become conscious of it, and then you become incompetent, but you doing you basically just keep doing it, but you don't know what you're doing, <laughs> right? And then from there, because you keep doing it over and over again, you become conscious and you become competent, right? So then you know what you're doing and you know that you want to do this. So therefore, you're actually going to do it good. And then the last one is uh, unconscious competence, which means you don't need to think about it anymore. You basically just do it on autopilot. <laughs> it's like driving. Yeah. It's like driving, riding a bike or anything. You'll never forget it, right? So basically, you can see every single one of them, every single day is marked out, right? So week one, day one, day two, day three, day four, day five. See, week two, day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day week three, week four, so on and so forth. <laughs> so I literally mapped out everything until week five, then they're on their own. Day one, what are they going to do? Like script work, right? What are they going to do? What are they going to say on their scripts? basically work on the scripts directly with the clients and then work scripts with affiliates too. So uh, like I said, it's always building out a dream, right? Uh, like a, the team, like, what are you going to say to the affiliates? What are you going to say to the, the lenders or what do you, whatever you want to say, right? <laughs> How do you add value to somebody else? Uh, role play the scripts for hours, right? And then the homework, I actually give my guys homework to see if they're like legit and they want to actually stay there, right? <laughs> so basically I make them rewrite the script in their own words, which is actually something like, this is, this is something secret that I do and nobody else does in their company, in their own company, I think. <laughs> tell me your why, because then that tells me exactly what they're doing it for and what their motivation is. And then I also make them make a vision board. And then after that, start building and start thinking about affiliates, right? Uh, Russell Brunson, uh, he always talks about what the Dream 100 is. And so I want to see how creative they really are, right? And see how committed they are. If they actually come in with a list tomorrow, if they came in with a their why and they came in with their own scripts, they're a rock star, right? So certain things like that that I mapped out to actually get the best of the best. <laughs> great, great, man. This is this is great value here. So we're we're gonna share this with the viewers, right? I, I can share the script maybe. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> here, here's here's my direct script if, right, if they want so, it. So this is what we're gonna do for all the viewers out there. We're gonna share the script that it's very detailed, very practiced. This has been reformatted numerous times. So this is a script that we know that works. This is a script that converts. So lucky for you guys, we're sharing this. We're giving back. Hope this helps. Beautiful, beautiful. Hey, Hung, thank you so much. Um, for all the viewers out there, if you were entertained or got value, click the like button and subscribe for more content. If you got any questions to ask Hong, make sure to comment below and share so you can help others just like yourself. Hong, thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Wei. I'll see you on the next one. Let's go. All right, man. Laters.